First fly I'd like to start with is what I call the APT, All Purpose Terrestrial. Pretty much uh, does what it says on the tin in that it covers a lot of terrestrials. If you tie it on a size 12 for example, it covers hawthorns, heather flies, you drop to a 14, more likely a 16, you're in the black gnat territory. Drop down to an 18, you're looking at ants and a size 20 midge. 22, you, you, you're on the realms of an aphid the black aphids that we get. So let's start with the fly. It's a fairly simple fly. There's a few prompts for beginners. We're beginning with our thread. In this case I'm using the Semperfly 12O uh, classic wax thread. I like the 12O because it, uh, you don't get a lot of build up and being a multi-fibred thread it lies flat. Equally even for 12O it's extremely strong. So let's catch on. You'll see me periodically as we're tying, I'm just taking the tension off there, winding in an anti-clockwise direction. It just makes the thread lie flat, good for covering ground, uh, nice even turns. Just tighten that vice up a little bit there, I've got a little bit of wobble. Just round about two thirds there, I'm going to catch in the rib. Um, and, and we're using the Semperfly quill subs in size small, the green. I prefer this. It's not a rib per se in that we're looking for segments uh, on, on the abdomen. It's more for the glint and durability because we want to make a, a pretty bomb, bomb proof fly. Also compacts the dubbing as well because the rear of the fly, when you see the finished article, we want that to sit through the surface film. So here's a nice tip for beginners. Often catching in, sometimes you see people like this and oh God, yeah, you can see what happens. The other thing, I'm digressing a little bit, you'll see I've got, I've got this uh, mounted on a bobbin holder, which is a great way for ribbing, as you'll see. But yeah, where were we? Back to the tip for beginners. Just hold your, thread, um, hold your tinsel over your thread, press down, bring together like that. Now you've got this sliding tinsel there. Just catch that on, pull that down a little bit. I've taken an extra turn. And then you can just tweak, tweak this into place. I don't mind an actual little bit of a tag there, you can see, because that'll get buried. In fact, them couple of turns there, we've, we've buried that. So we'll work around the bend. We'll just park this up over here. Now we want, want to create our body. This fly's evolved over the years in that when I first tied it, I used Peacock Hurl. These days we've got a lot more synthetics that are durable, longer lasting flies. Um, one of my versions is, is using super fine K-pop dubbing. I've got the super fine here. Why I like this is because you can get an ultra thin dubbing noodle on the thread and to make that compact body again, a mistake beginners make, I believe, and it's one I made myself when I, when I started out, is where you want a build-up of dubbing, you tend to pile more dubbing on the thread. You're better off put, putting a finer noodle uh, of dubbing on the thread and creating build-up with more turns of thread. That way the dubbing doesn't collapse and you get the profile you're after. And it's quite important with this fly because we're after that reverse taper, almost like an elongated rugby ball, if you like, where we want the bulky part at the rear, pretty much like an ant or a wasp is a, is a good analogy for that. So let's take a little bit of dubbing. And one of the keys with dubbing is little and often, you can see I'm just teasing that out. Readily it's into this, what we call a, a, a dubbing mat or dubbing noodle is a technical term. And we can just tease it out. And it's little and often with dubbing, as you'll see. We just offer this up, slightly press on there and ca catch, catch this on. Just going to use a little bit of the uh, fly tire spit. I tend not to use dubbing wax and the reason is it doesn't allow you to move the dubbing about like this for example. We can move this about. So I'm not taking several turns. If we dub down here you can see there's a, a, an inch, an inch and a half. Uh, I can just dub this tight and then just push this up and we're almost ready. We'll shorten our working thread. And we're ready to begin winding. Just catch that dubbing in and then you can see I can with a couple of turns just 
compact that down. Round the bend a wee bit. And you'll see, one thing that, again, a little tip for beginners, is often they always just want to work forward. You, you can go in reverse, as you'll see here. A good prompt now is where the, uh, the abdomen doesn't want to be any further up than when the thread's hanging than the hook point. So that's what I'm looking for there. We've got to pop a wing on here, a hackle, uh, and then a wee head. So we need to be conscious of that, and we don't want to crowd, crowd the eye of the fly. So there it is at rest, just in line with the hook point. I can backwind whilst uh, compacting that dubbing. And this is where we'll just create that sort of bulbous rear end. Hopefully it's evident there. Nice narrow waist at the top end of the abdomen or body. Just compact that last little bit of dubbing down. I gauge that one right, there's no excess dubbing. That's the other thing with, with dubbing, if you use wax as well, if you put too much dubbing on, uh, it can be a little bit more tricky to, to remove that afterwards when you've got excess dubbing here. Trying to take it off with wax is a little bit tricky. Then it's a case of just popping on our Peacock Quill Subs. This is great material and it just compacts it, gives it that element of iridescence as well, which I like for terrestrial flies, especially when it comes to the likes of beetles. And this will cover beetles as well, the Rove Beetle in particular. We're fortunate in uh, my neck of the woods in the Lake District and Cumbria that there are a lot of rove beetles. Rove beetles are those long, slender uh, beetles that you see. This is a great fly to cover that situation as well. Just locked a couple of turns in front there and just push with the scissors to take the rib off. Bury those turns. I've got a, a wayward uh, length of dubbing there. Because it's on camera, you're always uh, compelled. <laughs> compelled to cut that off but I'll be brutally honest if it was time for myself I'd be quite happy for that. So we're on to the wing. I tend to prefer CDC. It's natural looking, uh, compacts down nice and readily. I've got two plumes here. I'm just going to marry those up. Got the curves working in the same direction and in an upward uh, attitude. That's just my preference. Just align them tips. Pop the wing on and we'll just take two soft or loose turns. Have a look at the length, that's way too long. It's, easy, it's better to put a longer wing on because you can draw on the stems to just pull that length down. I'm kind of aiming for when the wing's uh, stretched out just in line, if I flatten the wing down, just in line or just beyond the, uh, the bend of the hook. So I'll just take those and guide them a little bit shorter shorter again that's about perfect backwind again just sit that wing up I'll actually knock a turn pull the wing forward knock a turn on behind there just sits that wing up nicely then we can cut off the waist see now I've got plenty of length for three turns of hackle and a tiny head on the fly as well endeavour to bury those uh, CDC foot ends there. Our hackle, again there's options, I'm just using a um, grizzle hackle, cock hackle. I like, I like the bicoloured hackles like the grizzle and the badger. It, it's kind of a contradiction but you get movement without movement. There's almost an element of movement. You can use black, that's what I used on the original APT. But these days I, I'm quite happy with the grizzle hackle. I've just stripped off several fibres there. We'll offer that up. I like the shiny side forward so when we wind the hackle is just slightly curved back. Again, it's personal preference. Some people prefer it the other way. But for me this is the way I prefer it. So the shiny side of the hackle towards me. The dull side towards yourselves. Just catch that in. I've wound quite far up and you, you'll see why, I just think you catch in better when you actually back wind onto the hackle having taken the three turns. Just set that hackle and we just get that nice sort of right angle or perpendicular effect. There's my three turns, now I'll back wind. Knock on two turns, one in front because 
Um, this will hold it, but often now when we pull on the hackle to stretch it, again, it's a tip for beginners, is you'll just open that last turn. So it's, it's always nice to just knock a turn in front there and it just sits that hackle solid so you can pull up pull on it all day long got to be careful here obviously i tend to cut my hackle i position it here so i can see it to cut, cut away the, the 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 butt end if you like but if we go in with the scissors and take a swipe often we'll take away some of these pressure hackle fibers so you better just get in the tiniest wee v in in your scissors training that down and just pushing on the hackle there like that there's a few fibers kicking in front you could actually if you want train those backwards and wind over but it will set the hackle backwards a bit so i just to prefer to feed him with the scissors and just take those out so now we've got plenty of room just creating a little bit of a, a foundation if you like for the head the dubbing again there's options here my preferred is the uh, semperfly ice dubbing in peacock green though if you're looking to copy house flies or blue bottles the uh, peacock blue is very very good as well i'm going to be stick stick by my guns today and finish with a little bit of the peacock green ice dubbing and it is a, it is a small amount a little tip here often some of these fibers um especially with the peacock ice dubbing just sort of stray a little bit is just to sort of cup your hand and just give it a little whirl and it it, 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 bring, it almost instantly brings it into this desired noodle that we're after for dubbing. So we can offer that up. I, I can tell from experience I've got too much on there. I'll take some of them fibres off the, the bottom end. Probably still got a little bit too much. Let's have a look. With the fibres now I don't mind some uh, sticking out in fact uh, again not necessary with this fly but a little tip is just if you just when you come down with your dummy if you just push it a bit it sort of eases the fibers out like that if you want that nice prickly effect but what I'm saying is don't be too precise here again I started at the eye and back winding you can see that there's a good tip for you, you saw me back wind one turn sometimes it's fly tires we have a tendency to rush on just take stock for a moment have a look at your fly assess it because you've still got time to alter it it's it's not a race yeah I, I knew I just knew we had too much on and you can see how easy the excess is to take off when you don't use wax just burying that tip down uh, let's get that okay up to the eye i'll now tighten the thread because what that does is reduces the profile of the, the thread makes it round it also makes it stronger for the whip finish we'll pop a bead of varnish on there these days i'm sort of belt and braces i knock on two whip finishes four turns we'll just pack that there like that into my uh varnish and rather than sort of try and feed in and dab on the head I just bleed a little bit of varnish onto the thread often you'll get a little bead of varnish just at the thread under the eye there I actually don't mind that because on the second whip finish where I don't use varnish that'll catch that dubbing and bury it in there and then draw up your second whip finish as I do with all my flies, again, rather than take a swipe, I just follow that down, close the gap and push. Just check the eye. I can see a little bit of varnish down there. There we go. Free that. So finally, all we want to do, we've got a great fly. The wing will sit flush. Once we take the underside of the hackle off, I'll just train some of them fibres up. Feed in with my scissors. You can be as liberal as you like. Let's just get that one off. There we go. And there we go. There's the APT forks. Hope you enjoyed that. I would definitely give this a go at this time of year because any day now, weather permitting, we'll be seeing 
black gnats or fever flies dropping. And I imagine this uh, dubbing needle is, is the surface film. You can see that the uh, the body of the fly would, would sit subsurface where you want it. It just anchors in. Okay, folks, that's the APT. I hope you enjoyed that. A couple of fishing tips. Generally single fly, cast upstream uh, on, on the rivers, quartering upstream. Again, we're all different in terms of length of leader and, and uh, uh, prevailing conditions will dictate that, i.e. if it's a breezy day, your leader will be that little bit shorter. If it's calm conditions or you've got that, uh, you're blessed with the wind from over your shoulder, then you, you can lengthen the leader to 14, 15, even 16 feet. Great fly, it's not just a river fly, excellent fly on still waters as well at this time of year. You can fish two flies now, a duo if you like, approximately four foot apart on a 10 foot leader. Uh, I tend not to go too long with the droppers because they tangle the main leader leg, if you like. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, folks. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.